Hey YouTube, it's Ben here with the 60 gallon cichlid tank. And I've had a few requests recently uh, from folks asking me to kind of break it down. Uh, break it down, what, 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 what have I got going on here in the tank? And kind of break it down into its component parts, giving you a few details of how, uh, how I have this set up. So I'm going to give you a very quick little breakdown here. And uh, uh, first off, let's, let's start with, the, with the, the substrate. What I have going on here with this substrate are shells and coral that is from Caribbean Sea, Caribbean Sea, cichlid specific, and it came wet with beneficial bacteria already in it, which together with some API quick, quick start and some um, filter media from an established tank, was able to get the tank up and running very, very quickly. So uh, Caribbean Sea, and as you can see, the uh, cichlids have no trouble moving it around. You can see the caves and uh, the different areas that they back here they have it down to the they have it down to the plastic bottom that I put here to protect the bottom from the rocks so um, that plastic bottom by the way is just uh, something from a from a neon light fixture you know you can pick these up at hardware stores and you just cut them to fit and they just give the rocks a little extra support so that the uh, they're not resting directly on the uh, on the glass. It can possibly create a, a, a crack or some kind of a fracture. So um, I got that idea from Rob Oswell, Rob Oz uh, on YouTube. He's up in Canada and a uh, real good guy. I've been posting for a while. He had a couple of really nice tanks, including one that was uh, strictly Mabuna. Very beautiful, uh, beautiful tanks. Okay, coming up from the substrate, I've, I have uh, Lava Rock. All the rock that you see here in here is lava rock, and uh, it's growing a little bit of a purple. That is not algae; it's something else. Someone described it to me once, but uh, it's got a little bit of a purple growth. Not the fish love pecking on it, and um, at any rate, uh, that's lava rock. And uh, someone told me that could help with pH. I'm not sure. Uh, I do have uh, this type of a substrate, mostly because it buffers. That's the reason I picked it up because the water from the tap here in Southern California uh, doesn't have the kind of pH you need for cichlids, so I needed to buffer it up. So um, I have, um, for filtration, I'm using two SunSun Sun 302s. I think because of the bio load that I'm running on the tank, I'm probably gonna get one of those swapped out and make it a, 40, a 304B, SunSun Sun 304B. I love the Sun Suns because they move a lot of water and they also have very large trays. Uh, I have them here underneath the tank you can see them here. Here's one of them. And here's the other one. Two Sun Sun 302s. Because of the bio load on my tank, I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, uh, increase one of those. And uh, even though I probably will be separating out the tank between Mabunas and uh, a second tank, a 125 six footer for the peacocks and haps. So we'll see how that goes. Whenever I do water changes, I add cichlid lake salts and I add safe. And um, I'm using safe instead of, a, it's just basically Seachem Prime, but in powder form. That little bottle there uh, is going to last me probably uh, probably three years <laughs> because of the powder is very concentrated. The liquid lake salts or the uh, cichlid lake salts, they do get used up pretty quickly because uh, you need like a quarter or um, yeah, a quarter teaspoon, I think, for every 10 gallons. So you can go through a lot of it but I've been using those two products recently. I'm feeding them this Northfin product. I uh, started feeding them Northfin. I noticed that they filled out very quickly. They started adding um, some, nice, um, some nice size, nice color. Fins uh, seem to uh, extend out a little further. Uh, so I could tell a difference here with this Northfin and it doesn't seem to cloud the water really that much. I was getting a little bit of water clouding with the um, New Life Spectrum. So that's really what I'm feeding them now. I'm going to be adding a little bit of a veggie for my uh, tangerine tiger and my mabunas. They, they need a little bit more veggies in their diet. So I'm going to be adding maybe some veggie crisps. Of course, the uh, carnivorous, uh, you know, your your haps and uh, or your uh, my fusco and and the uh, the electric blue, they go after the veggies too. So hopefully the uh, mabunas will have a chance to get at them. By the way, if you get a chance, get to a hardware store, get these up. These are stuck on with a two-sided tape, and it's just a push-on, push-off light. Uh, they cost about three bucks each, and they let you see what's going on under the tank. Very highly recommended. 
My plants, by the way, are um, plastic. People ask me, hey, man, that's a great looking pathos. Oh, that's a great looking plant. Where'd you get it from? These are plastic plants. And, uh, uh, you know, cichlids can be pretty hard on plants. Uh, some people have been successful keeping them. I had one that previously I thought would do well, but over time it just made too much of a mess. So I stopped using it. My uh, heater is an API 200 watt. I keep it uh, horizontal and low in the tank so I don't have to mess with it during water changes. And uh, it's worked out really well. When it's working, it has a red light. When it's on the target temperature, the light is green. So I know it's always doing its job. All right. And uh, so there's the breakdown of the tank. I do get a lot of questions uh, from folks about, hey, what kind of filtration are you using, that kind of thing. And uh, what's your substrate? What kind of rocks? What are those plants? I get questions like that all the time. So hopefully I'll just be able to refer them to this video and that will answer their questions and, uh, and help them to understand what I'm doing here with this, uh, this little uh, aqua this aquarium of mine. And uh, <clears throat> so that's it for now. I think what I'll do is I'll go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna show you what I have inside my canisters and uh, because sometimes I also get that question as well. What do you have inside your canisters? So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look uh, inside one of my um, let's take a look inside one of my two Sun Sun 302 canister filters. Let's see um, uh, let's see how I, I set them up. The bottom I have ceramic rings that breaks up the water flow when the water comes from the tank into a Sun Sun. It goes to the bottom, and uh, when it goes to the bottom, it uh, just hits these ceramic rings. They're not there to build beneficial bacteria. They're, this, they're there to just catch big pieces and break up the, uh, the water flow. Then my first tray goes in. One thing I like about Sun, Sun Sun canisters are the large trays that they give you. In this tray, I have uh, three kinds of sponges that I've cut myself. They are egg crate style, and you can get them off of eBay. There's a fine sponge, the green one. There's a medium sponge, the black one. And then there's a coarse sponge, the blue one at the very bottom of, the, of, the, uh, of that particular tray is the coarse sponge. So my first tray, the water is coming up from the bottom, is being pulled up by the, uh, by the pump. It's being pulled up and it goes through the, uh, the uh, coarse, then the medium, and then the uh, fine sponge on the way back to the tank. Now you'll notice I have a black mark here on the edge of the sun sun. I do that to line up the intake tubes. Makes it very easy to put the canister back together. So I don't have to be messing or guessing where it goes or trying to line up the head, the motor, and where uh, trying to figure out where that goes. My next tray has a biological uh, media, beneficial bacteria media. In this case, I'm using uh, Marine Pure. Uh, this is a uh, ceramic or CER Media, C-E-R Media, uh, from Marine Pure. Very porous, uh, creates the uh, kind of bacteria that re uh, requires water movement and also that doesn't require water movement deep inside the, uh, inside the uh, ceramic balls. Um, here we have uh, a little bit of polyfill at the very bottom of this tray, just to give the water a little extra polish before it hits the beneficial bacteria media. So there's a, a little hand cut strip of polyfill. That's just crib batting. And um, you can pick it up from any fabric store, any hob hobby, hobby Lobby, something like that. And uh, then I have uh, BioHome Ultimate. BioHome Ultimate. That's available in the United States and of course uh, from Great Britain. Very, very good media. And on the very top of it all, I put some Seachem uh, Pyrogen, uh, a bag of Seachem Pyrogen, which is uh, pretty amazing at, at clarifying and making your water nice and crystal clear. So there you have it. Uh, the water comes from the tank, hits the bottom ceramic rings, breaks up, picks up big pieces of stuff, then comes up through the three filters, the three sponge filters, hand cut egg crate style sponge filters, uh, coarse, medium, and fine. Now be sure to fill your canister as much as you can with tank water before you put the motor on, before you put the head unit back on it. 
and that makes us starting the unit very, very simple. Usually I just plug it in and away we go. Maybe tilt it a couple times. That's inside my filter. All right, so there you have it. There's the breakdown on my tank. I hope that helps. And um, certainly take everything with a grain of salt. Do your own research. Uh, certainly set up the tank that works best for you. Uh, this is the way mine sort of worked out. And uh, uh, certainly when I set up the 125, uh, truth is probably it'll all be different. So uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll stick with Sun Sun. Uh, I'll probably go with a black substrate and uh, maybe a rock background. Or maybe black. I like black backgrounds too. And uh, But hey, I want to thank all of you for subscribing, all of you for uh, tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. As you know, I do uh, answer, uh, reply to comments. So uh, definitely feel free to, uh, to comment and rate and subscribe and all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys and, I'm, uh, and I hope that you find my videos helpful. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.